All right, guys, this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of video today. Today, I'm going back to the basics. We're going to start at the very beginning because I've had some really beginner kind of questions here recently. A lot of people are exploring Linux. We've got a lot of people that are coming over from Windows to Linux or people that are thinking about coming over from Windows or Mac OS you know, over to Linux. And one of the common first questions people ask is, how can I try out Linux? How can I test Linux out? before I actually install it because I don't want to just wipe out Windows on my computer or Mac OS on my computer and jump into Linux without knowing if it's actually going to work for me. So what are some ways that I can actually test Linux? And that's a great question. And for me, I think there are three good ways that you could test out Linux. And I'm going to start with the easiest one as far as the easiest one as far as time and money is going to be the USB stick. Get a USB stick, right? And then burn the ISO to the USB stick. So what you do on any Linux distribution that you want to install, you go and download the ISO. The ISO is an image file. That's the file that you need to actually install the operating system to a computer. Well, you can actually install that file to a USB stick. You burn it to a USB stick with a USB writing program. On Linux, the one I use is Etcher Bellina. Uh, Etcher Bellina is available pretty much in every Linux distro's repositories. It's also available as an app image on Linux. Now, for those of you obviously coming from Windows or Mac, you're going to find ISO writers, uh, image writers. Uh, for example, on Windows, I think one of the more popular ones is Rufus. Just use Rufus to burn whatever Linux distribution's ISO you want to test out. Burn it to that USB stick. Plug it into your computer. Reboot the computer. And on some computers, it will just automatically boot you into that operating system that's on that USB stick. Now, a lot of times it won't. Most computers actually won't boot directly off the USB stick by default. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hit F2 or F12 or whatever the secret key to get into your BIOS settings is. Every computer is different, but it'll tell you on the screen when you boot your computer. It'll have a key that you hit to get into the BIOS settings. Go into the BIOS settings and make sure the first thing that it boots is your USB stick. In my case, this is a SanDisk brand USB stick. So in my BIOS settings, it'll probably say like, you know, 32 gig USB SanDisk. And I, I make sure that I put that as the first in the boot order, and then it will boot off this USB stick. For example, if I install Ubuntu to, the, to this USB stick, then I can actually run Ubuntu on that computer behind me off of this USB stick. Performance won't be great, uh, but again, it lets you test things out without actually doing anything permanent to your computer because you're not actually touching the drives in that computer. Everything you do while you're testing it out is written to this USB stick. Now, while the USB stick is a great way to test out a Linux distribution to try it out before you actually install it on physical hardware, it's not my favorite because, again, performance issues. If you have a pretty decent computer with good specs, so a pretty decent CPU, and you also need some RAM, you're going to need quite a bit of RAM. You know, if you've got at least, say, 16 gigs of RAM, you're probably good. If you got 32 gigs of RAM or better, that's even better. Then what I would suggest is trying a Linux distribution out in a virtual machine. Now, virtual machines, that probably sounds scary. You're like, what the hell is a virtual machine? Don't worry about it. <laughs> a virtual machine is just a way to basically install an operating system into a virtual machine, not a physical machine. You're not touching your physical machine. It's all virtualized, right? It's all magic. But basically there's this program that's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux called VirtualBox. That's the one I recommend, especially to new users. Go download and install VirtualBox on your Windows computer. And then inside this program called VirtualBox, you can install, for example, Ubuntu or Fedora or Linux Mint or Manjaro, whatever Linux distribution you're thinking of trying out. In install several of them. Install a dozen of them. You can test out as many distributions as you want inside these virtual machines. And it's, again, it's all magical. Like, I love virtual machines. They're my favorite way to test things out. Now, the downside is your host machine, you know, the physical machine that's hosting all these virtual machines, does need to have a pretty decent CPU. It needs to have some RAM. And if you install a lot of virtual machines and keep those virtual machines around for a long time, you also are going to need a little bit of disk space as well. Now, a third way that is probably the absolute best way to test out Linux as far as a Linux operating system, you're wondering about it. The best way is to actually install it on physical hardware. But of course, the point of today's video was some of you guys don't want to install it to your physical machine, your main machine. Well, guess what? 
Most people have multiple computers. Chances are you have an old laptop or maybe even an old desktop sitting around in a closet somewhere. And the great thing is Linux is not nearly as heavy as operating systems like Windows or Mac OS. Linux typically can run on some pretty old hardware. So machines that are, you know, 10 years old, Linux probably will run just fine on them. So if you've got, you know, an old ThinkPad, for example, this laptop, this ThinkPad, you know, that you know, I bought off of eBay, I think for a hundred dollars, like without a hard drive. I had to buy like a $30 hard drive to put in it as well. But you know, you can actually, if you don't have a secondary machine to test out things like other operating systems, you can get pretty cheap devices, older hardware. But again, for Linux, this is perfect. You can actually just go buy a machine to test out Linux and not spend a terribly large amount of money. Now, most people are not going to want to spend money to test out another operating system. I don't recommend that unless that's something that you're interested in. And maybe you need an extra machine anyway. It's certainly uh, something you could consider, but most people probably have an old laptop, maybe something that ran Windows 7 or Windows 10. And you know, th those operating systems got really slow and buggy. And you thought that laptop, you know what? It's garbage. Let me just shut it down, power it off, put it away in a closet. I'm going to go buy the latest and greatest new laptop. At Best Buy or wherever, right? Well, go get that old laptop out of the closet and install Linux on it. I think you'll be surprised because a lot of times Linux will actually resurrect some of this old hardware that you thought was dead, right? It'll actually bring it back to life. So there you have it. Three different ways you can test out Linux without actually installing Linux to your main production machine, you know, whatever it happens to be. Again, you know, three different ways uh, of varying performance, right? My least favorite is actually the USB stick because it's not great as far as performance, but it's easy. Like this is definitely the easiest way to check out a Linux distribution. But again, performance, it's running off a of USB flash drive. It's not great performance, right? This is my least favorite. My second best favorite is actually just installing it in a virtual machine using VirtualBox. You'll get good performance as long as your host machine has pretty decent specs. And of course, the best way is to actually just install Linux on a physical machine, an extra machine, a secondary laptop that you have. That's the best way to try out Linux. So three different ways. Hopefully one of those ways works for you. Peace, guys.